So next day, Chrysler Crossfire. Uh, last night I let the car cool down. After one hour I tried cranking it, crank no start. After two hours, it cranked up again, you know, manually energizing the starter solenoid. And I let it run for about 30 seconds, shut it off with the key, and then manually cranked it again, crank no start. Okay, so we might be dealing with a weak crankshaft position sensor, but we need to figure out why we can't shift it out of park, why all these modules are offline, the TCM, ABS, uh, shift lever assembly, um, so I can at least, hopefully, pull it in the shop here. I want to get it out of park and figure out what's going on. So, what's the thought process here? Three modules are offline. You can't shift out of park. Let's look up the diagram for the shift lock um, solenoid, see how that's controlled, and is there a common thread between these modules? Um, let's take a look at some wiring diagrams. So, OE diagram for the shift lever assembly. You see it is on the can, it talks to the TCM, this is offline, this is offline. Um, powers and grounds. Is there a common power feed? Um, what powers up these modules? Well, right here, you see this traction system relay, relay control module. So when this turns on, we should get power to our shift lever assembly. We should get power to our TCM. And look, it branches off and goes to the ABS controller. Well, that's interesting. It seems like it powers up a lot of the stuff that's offline. If we go to the ABS power distribution diagram, here it is, traction system relay. Again, it powers up the ABS controller or wakes it up. Um, and then the brake lamp switch, it's a dual switch. This one turns on the actual brake lights, which work. But right here, this second part of the brake lamp switch is also powered up by the traction system relay. And you can see that leg right there goes to the shift lever assembly. So if we're missing the power feed, all these modules will be offline, and obviously this brake lamp switch will be inactive, and we won't have we won't be able to shift it out of park. So uh, if we look at the main power distribution diagram, and that would be eight W ten dash 20, this relay control module, there's our traction system relay, and again, now we can see all the modules that it feeds, the brake lamp switch, ABS controller, shift lever assembly, and TCM. So right off the bat, I want to check the power coming into this relay control module and the output of this traction system relay. Pins 4 and 5 in connector C, it's a red and yellow red and dark green. Now the engine control relay we know works, the engine does run so these two fuses, you know it's a fused output from this relay and it goes to a bunch of different places. Um, so this relay control module has fuses and relays built into it apparently. They're probably not serviceable, well the fuses might be serviceable. But we have air pump fuse, engine control fuse, engine control fuse 2, traction system fuse, and on the next diagram, horn fuse and fuel pump fuse. Alright, so it looks like six fuses. Um, let me pull up the, I think there's another diagram here, of the fuse box. Right here. Relay control module fuses. One, two, three, four, five, six. So Let's see, 40 amp, that must be the air pump, just battery positive, hot at all times. These two, engine control relay output, fuse number two, number five, they should be hot with a key on, and the other three should be hot all the time. So that's a great place to start. Let's start at this relay control module. We'll check all six fuses, make sure they're hot on both sides with the key on, and then on diagram 20, I want to check 
these outputs from the traction system relay because like the engine control relay if these two fuses are high we know the relay worked um, but the traction system even if the fuse is high it could be feeding a relay it doesn't mean the outputs gonna be good so let's do some test light checks at this relay control module and I'm suspecting we'll find something interesting with the output of this traction system relay okay so this right here is the relay control module with the six fuses so test light from battery that's grounded if we find a positive it's going to light up key is on let's check all six fuses they should all be hot on both sides that's, there's the big 40 amp 20 amp checks out and fuse number three checks out fuse four is fine fuse five is fine Fuse 6 is fine. Okay. So. Now I want to check one of these wires. The red, green, or the red, yellow. Pins 4 or 5. Coming out of this traction system relay. So I have that back probe. This red and green wire. Let's see if that has voltage on it. Huh. There we go. No test light. So now, how do we safely feed power into that circuit to basically bypass the relay? So we know it's on a 15 amp circuit, so this does, you know, is designed to carry some current for sure. So I want to use a 5 amp test light from battery positive. So we'll go from here and feed that right into my back probe. Now, if it's shorted to ground, it would have blown the fuse. I'm sure it's not shorted to ground. Let's just plug it in. So, test light did not light up, but let's see if something changed with the car. I have everything plugged in here. You know, the starter, pulse relay is all OEM. That's plugged in. Let's see if anything changed. So, I'm going to turn the key off. Turn it on. Just try to crank it. Still no crank. Still can't shift out of park. Um, let me... Let's get the scanner out and see if any of the modules came back online. So you gotta slow down and go fast. It must be too early in the morning. We want to feed power to here. That's ground. <laughs> so... That was my bad. Let's take a plug from here. That was an invalid experiment. <clears throat> okay. So now, keys off. I'm just going to feed this power. So you heard something wake up there. So my test light, my little test light from ground, we have power here now. Now let's see what happens when we turn the key. Let's see. Key on. <laughs> oh! So it started from the key. Let's see if we can take it out of gear. Yes! Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Let's uh, see if the modules came back online. I assume they did because the car started on its own. We can take it out of gear. Is it basically fixed? So indeed that power output from the traction system relay was missing. And when we, when we bypassed the relay, when we provided that power with a you know a 5 amp test light, things seem to be working now. Um, so now the car is drivable. I mean, we can pull in the shop. Let's scan it for codes, see if all the modules are back online. And that was, that was pretty uh a pretty quick check but keep in mind we had to know which wires to check which fuses to check so about 80 percent of diagnostic time is research looking at wiring diagrams and seeing if <clears throat> we can explain the symptoms it, it, we just did one check there but after about an hour of research we'll check it out 
all the modules are back online. Power top, it's not equipped. So, fantastic. Let's clear out all the DTCs. Turn the key on. Okay. And we'll see if it starts up again. Place your bets now. Okay, so these are the hard faults we have left. Rough road detected. Okay, ESP says low pressure feed valve. Da, da, da. Can module timeout. Left rear wheel speed sensor circuit. Okay, we don't care. Let's see if it starts. Just absolutely perfect. So we might not have a problem with the crankshaft position sensor. Uh, we can still scope it when it gets warm, just to make sure that it matches the known good we got from the other crossfire. But let's pull in the shop, see what's up with this uh, traction control relay. <clears throat> so, let's see if it goes. Has flat tires. <laughs> but it's not a beached whale anymore. So that's promising. Alright, so car's in the shop. Let's see what's going on with this relay control box. So I have the input unplugged, and the input is uh, this pink and red wire on pin 2 connector D. So A, B, C, D, pin 2, that's the ignition turn on, you know, control wire for that relay. So what we can do is take a test light from battery positive, if it finds a ground, it's going to light up. Let's see what happens when we just touch this pin. Okay, so something clicks in here. Now keep in mind that wire, control wire, turns on the traction system relay and also that engine um, relay that powers on these two fuses here. So now, this is my test light connected to battery ground. If it finds a positive, it's going to light up. So fuses 2 and 5 should not be hot right now. 2 and 5. And when, if I can put my test light on there, and energize the middle pin. So I'll hold this right here. When we touch the middle pin, fuse number two should come to life. So we'll put the test light in the picture. Get this out of the way. The test light's in the picture. So if I hold my test light on there and energize the middle pin, okay, that works. And two, three, four, five, and five should come on. So the engine relay is fine, but we know that the output from the traction system relay, which is after you know the fuse, then the relay, then this leg doesn't work. So this traction system relay is not clicking. Um, so the test light here, it's connected to battery ground, the bigger one, does not turn on when I energize that middle pin with my power light. Okay, so let's take this box out and see if we can trace the circuits from the middle pin through the traction relay to the output right here. So we know the pinouts and it looks like this box might be able to slide out. So instead of wiring in an external relay, if we can help it, maybe there's something wrong inside this box. All right, so on the bench, this relay module, the cover does come off, and here we see a beautiful row of five relays. So we can do all the bench testing right here. You'll need a 12 volt power supply, and the power feed coming in is connector B, pin four, just like the diagram says, connector B, pin four, and that should power up the load side of the engine and the traction system relays, okay? So now, Let's check the outputs here. So this test light again from battery ground 
I want to see this power coming in. It should be powering up the traction system fuse right here. This should be hot at all times. So let's see which one that is. Okay, it's this third. So fuse one, two, three. Fuse number four goes to the traction system relay. Now the output of that relay is on connector C, pin 5 and 6. Again, double check your wiring diagram. Or is it 4 and 5 on connector C? And which relay is that? Well, we can easily check. So I have a test light connected from pin C4 to ground. And if that relay is energized, that little test light should light up. So uh, it's probably going to be this relay. So the body of the relay the on the load side is hot, and when this point closes, let's see if the little test light comes on. So I'm just going to push it with the big test light. There it is. So that's the traction system relay, and if it clicks, it should come on. So there's a problem with the control side. Now the control side, you can see again, it's fed from pink and red to here and to ground. So if we energize pink and red, that relay should click. So let me set up one more adapter and we'll energize. Um, the pink and red is on connector 2D. So connector D is over here, the middle pin right there. So if we send power to that, the relay should click. Okay, so the next test, um, this module needs a ground, right? So whenever you see this, it's grounded. Well, it's got to be grounded somewhere, and that's on pin B5. Just by looking at the wiring colors on the car, uh, now I got that grounded. So the little baby test light that is still on the output of the power um, traction relay. Now, if I have battery positive on the tip of this test light, I should be able to energize some relays. So first let's make sure we do have battery positive. Uh, if it finds a ground, for example, right here. Yes, that's a good ground. So, let's be the computer and energize this middle pin right here, like you turn the ignition switch on. Okay, so you hear something click. What is clicking? Let's do a visual inspection. Let's see. Just the middle, re middle relay there. That would be the engine control relay, but the traction system relay is not clicking. That's a problem. Why? Why is that not clicking? So is the relay winding open or is there a problem with the circuit board? Now doing a kind of visual inspection on the contacts here, it looks like someone has been here, maybe tried reflowing either that pin or that pin. There's some something here that's a little strange. But let's see where the load is and where the control is and see what we're missing. Alright, so now let's test the control side of these relays. So test light from battery positive. The control pins are right here on each relay. And one of them is ground. See that relay, that pin is ground. The other one's the control side. So if you energize that, the relay should click. You'll have, you'll have a dim test light. And on the one that doesn't work, we do have a good ground. And look, when we energize this pin, the engine relay clicks, not the traction relay. And that makes sense because they're tied together. So we're energizing right here, and we should turn on both relays, no matter if we energize it at this relay or at this one. So that's it. This thing is junk, the actual control side of the coil, because we have good power and ground. Obviously you want to check if the solder joints are good. 
here and here, again, you know, that's a good ground. That's the control side. So we can do either from here or from here. We can measure the resistance, but since it's soldered in, you'll measure the resistance of both relays in, you know, in parallel on the control side. Mm. So we either need a new box, there's the part number, to fix the OEM, or we can easily wire in an external relay to bypass this internal one. Because, I mean, you could potentially take this one apart. So it's one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six solder points on here. But where are you going to find a replacement like this? I don't know. I mean, we could take this one out and just put an in a little mini relay here and solder it to the appropriate points and affix it to this board to make it look really neat. Uh, that's an option. But that's it. That's the diagnosis. So once we fix this part, then we take the car in a test drive, make sure it starts up every time, uh, put the scope on the crank sensor, make sure that's good. But it seems like this was failing. That, that was the original customer complaint. Um, now all the modules are offline. It doesn't even crank. Uh, hopefully there will be minimal parts required unless we the customer decides to replace the entire box. Well, another thing we could do, since these relays are controlled by the same control wire, we can just wire the load of the traction system relay to the engine control relay. Now, you might say, would that overload the relay? No, it shouldn't. I mean, there's the 15 amp fuse, 15 amp fuse, 15 amp fuse. Um, could this relay carry all the current? I think no problem because relay is usually designed to carry 40 amps and uh, the computer plus the traction you know module stuff this is a low current output as you saw we were able to bypass that relay with a 5 amp test light and the test light did not light so that maximum load on there is only a few amps so I think that might actually be a pretty easy reliable solution is to connect the load sides of these two relays so from here to here and then this engine control relay will power up both circuits and it's super easy to do on the board we'll just connect this pin right here solder on a wire to this pin right here minimal parts required all right so here's my game plan we're just gonna solder a jumper wire for the output of the two relays from here to here super easy I'm gonna reflow these crappy solder joints we're gonna tin the wire and solder it on and we're gonna pop this thing back in the car and it should run like nobody's business start and run I know Alex at Northridge Fix will be like, why aren't you using flux? Well, it's flux core solder, and these are big joints, so it's not as critical as micro soldering. But yes, flux is a very good idea, and I should buy some of that genuine, what is it, Amtec flux that they sell on their website. I've been actually watching that channel quite a bit. I'm, I just love diagnostics and repair of, uh, of anything. So let's reflow this whole joint with fresh solder. Let's fix this one over here. You see the TS100 has no problems reflowing these big joints. Puts out good heat. So this joint should look nice and shiny after you're done reflowing it. Beautiful, 
Let's touch this one up right here. Perfect. Now let's turn our wire. So flux core solder is the next best thing to using flux and solder. So all we need to do, oh, let's uh, tin this joint right here too before we put the wire on there. You guys see what I'm doing? I don't have the microscope. <laughs> I don't know how he has such steady hands. Okay, perfect. So let's solder this wire to here. Like just like that. One, two, three. Solid. <laughs> we see it was a solid. And then let's do the same for this joint right here. That's it. I'm not even going to bench test it. Let's put it on the car. It should fire right up. Relay module reinstalled, plugged back in. So we're still measuring the output with the one amp test light. So that should turn on and the car should start from the key. Place your bets now. Is our little jumper wire going to do the trick? Key on. Bingo. Satisfaction! That was pretty neat. So, scan all the module for codes, uh, clear anything out. The traction light is still on. There could be other issues. Uh, needs an oil change, test drive. But the main customer complaint is resolved. Um, maybe for bonus footage, we can warm the car up, make sure it starts reliably every time. And we can put the scope on the crank sensor, make sure it's still working really nicely, like the amplitude's good during cranking. Um, hopefully it doesn't need one. And this car's back on the road after a year with one little jumper wire that no one will ever know about. <laughs> Unless the other relay fails, the engine control relay, then it'll need a new uh, relay box. But for now, uh, I think we should be in good shape. Alright, let's do a little bonus footage. I want to measure this crankshaft position sensor along with the camshaft position sensor. So the green and dark green or green with a white stripe wires, those two go to the CKP, that's a floating sensor, variable reluctance type. So on the Pico, since we have isolated grounds, I want to measure across those two to get the full amplitude of that sensor. So that's the blue channel and the red channel is on the camshaft position sensor signal and grounded at the battery. There's a Pico scope. Let's uh, open the known good waveform and shut this thing off and crank it and see if the cranking amplitude of the CKP matches the known good. Okay, so this is the known good waveform with a new crankshaft position sensor off of that 2005 Chrysler Crossfire that we diagnosed um, a while back. And I'm interested in cranking amplitude here. So if you measure peak to peak, you know, from there to there, delta is more than five volts, like eight, eight and a half volts around there. So let's plug in the Pico and repeat this exact measurement. All right, so the car is running. We have good signals. Shut it off. Key on. Crank it. Simply beautiful. This thing does not need a new crankshaft position sensor. Amplitude's just fine. Cranks right up. So the only issue was a bad 
relay powering up the traction control system. Now that was TCM, ABS, shift interlock, and obviously it wouldn't crank because it didn't know what gear it was in. So now everything's perfect. We can shift through the gears. Um, let's take it for a spin. See if the traction control, you know, still has issues. But this car is basically done. I love it. All right, let's see how this thing goes. Better go pretty good with a V6. Woo! Clear off the brakes. <laughs> I'm sure those are a little rusty. Yeah, a big V6 in a little car, it goes pretty good. Um, we could try another scanner on the ABS module. I don't know why it was all weird, but main customer complaint definitely fixed. And that's it. So pretty neat. Once you know how the system works, you can see if you can modify the system reliably to fix it. No parts required because. You know, why waste resources and money when you can just solder in a jumper wire and the car will run perfectly fine for, you know, until the next relay goes bad. <laughs> so, that's it. Thanks a lot for watching. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Uh-oh. Dang it. Stalled out. I just hit the gas. It was... Kind of little wheel spin, and then the car is just like, we're done. Uh, let's see. Key off, key on, I guess it freaked out a little bit there, check engine, let's see what that's all about. <laughs>